This is Bishop Gregory Brewer's homily at the evening prayer at Church of the Holy Presence, Land, Florida, November 12th, 2013. One of the reasons that we gather this evening is to give thanks for the life of a man by the name of Charles Simeon. He will be mentioned later in the prayers. Charles Simeon is a hero in Anglicanism. He became, in the late 18th century, the rector at a very, very young age of Holy Trinity Church in Cambridge, England. He was young, stayed there a very, very long time. He was hated at the beginning. So fierce was their hatred of Simeon that when he went into the village of Cambridge, occasionally people would throw tomatoes. Um, more demonstrative than most of you and I go And it had everything to do with his reaction against the spiritual climate that was prevalent in Cambridge at the time that he became their vicar. You see, at the time, much of the Church of England was captivated by what would later be called latitudinarianism. You and I would call it sort of some kind of Christian version of agnosticism. Sure, God operated as is described in the Bible, but it is really not realistic to accept or to expect that kind of response from God now. And therefore, the Christian, Christian message had really been, had devolved into sacraments and being good. And there was very little talk about lively personal faith or about the church engaged in any kind of significant personal local mission. Well, both of those things were Simeon's heartbeat, hence the lessons. The lesson first about the, what is the word of faith? The word of faith is the gospel that we proclaim. This is what Paul is saying in Romans. And what is the fruit of the message? The fruit of the message is the confession that we make that Jesus is, in essence, who he says he is, the Son of God, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In fact, Simeon, writing about this very passage, says these words. He says, while no confession of ours can add anything to Christ's finished work, yet we are required to confess him and to confess him openly. Because of his glory and for the good of man, it is demanded of us. If we should conceal our faith in him, who would benefit? Or in what respect would God be glorified? I think such concealment would reflect on him the greatest disgrace. And it would assuredly tend to harden others in their unbelief. Hence, our blessed Lord requires that all should take up their cross daily and follow him, meaning being willing to pay the price of personal suffering, if need be, based on one's public and open confession that Jesus is, in fact, the Son of God. You can hear the autobiographical comment, can't you? Now, hearing what you do know of his life. He was fearless, but he wasn't merely a fearless evangelist. He was also a man of profound compassion. He began to reach out through his church to the service of those in need, again to the horror of many of the people who were there at Holy Trinity Church. You see, at that time, one of the ways that you, in essence, paid for the support of the church was that you bought a pew. And that's where your family sat, because that's what you had paid for. And Simeon made the astonishingly horrifying invitation that anybody could come, whether they bought a pew or not, and they would always be welcome. Well, you know how that went down. <laughs> <laughs> but it came out of both his love for Christ and through that, the love that God gave him for all people, regardless of who they were and whether they were members of Holy Trinity or not. Hence the second reading, do you love me? Jesus asks. The answer is, well, if you do, then what? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. 
In other words, tying inextricably together that threefold confession cord of both, yes, I love you, well, how are you showing it? By reaching out and caring for those who are in need. You see, the, the Bible actually doesn't know of what many of us think of that passes for Christianity, which is church attendance that does not result in lively faith, and a confession of Christ that does not result in the service of those who are in need. And yet those were, in fact, the hallmarks of Simeon's life. Over the course of the, I think, over two decades that Simeon was there, the entire spiritual climate of Cambridge, England was changed, as well as the spiritual climate of Cambridge University, through that faithful, dogged commitment to the things that are laid out in the Scriptures today, the importance of calling people to confess faith in Christ, and to demonstrate that confession, both in their love for Christ and their service of those who are in need. I would go so far as to say that's still the essence of what it means to be a Christian. That has not changed. And actually, if you're interested, Simeon's sermons still hold up. They're in print. That's how, that's how I got the quote. <laughs> so I would say to you tonight, that in many ways, especially as the Bishop of Central Florida, if there's anything that I would desire that would mark our churches in this diocese, including Holy Presence, is that call to make sure that faith is personal. And that that personal faith results in that kind of very clear confession. Public, open confession. Even today, I was at a lunch with business people in downtown Orlando, and they wanted me to tell a little bit about myself, and I did, and one of the phrases I used was, and I'm an unashamed Christian. That kind of clarity, and a love for Christ that actually results in serving those who are in need. Lively personal faith, demonstrated in a love for Christ and a love for others. Simeon's passion the passion of the gospel. Hopefully our passion as well. Amen. Amen.